Hi everybody, my name is Eric Brennan. I'm a scientist at the USDA Agriculture Research Service based in Salinas, California. Salinas Valley opens to Monterey Bay which acts as a natural air conditioner for much of this area. This climate is ideal for lettuce and over a billion dollars worth of lettuce is produced here annually. I've worked here since 2001 and my research over the past 12 years has focused on high value organic production systems. In this video, I'll share some of the lessons I've learned over the past 10 years on how to use intercropping to biologically control aphids on transplanted organic romaine lettuce. When you cut into a head of romaine lettuce, you can get a nice view of the densely packed interior leaves. Unfortunately, the most important insect pest of lettuce in California is a nasty aphid species that likes to infest this interior area and is easy to see. Intercropping or interplanting lettuce with plants that flower quickly like alyssum is a common and effective strategy that organic farmers here often use to control aphids. Alyssum is referred to as an insectary plant because when it's intercropped with lettuce, it attracts naturally occurring beneficial insects like hoverflies into the field. Hovering in midair requires lots of energy, which the adult hoverflies get from the sugary nectar of the alyssum flowers. The pollen provides the adults with a protein that they need to reproduce. After feeding on the flowers, the females fly through the field searching for lettuce plants where they'll lay their eggs. The females prefer to lay eggs on lettuce plants with aphids because the larvae that hatch from these eggs in a few days eat aphids. I like to think of aphids as walking milkshakes for hoverfly larvae. In fact, the larvae of some hoverfly species can eat up to 150 aphids per day before they mature into flying adults. In highly disturbed agricultural landscapes like those used for vegetable production in Salinas, the presence of hedgerows around the farm and the frequent use of cover crops help to protect and maintain populations of beneficial insects year-round. These habitats and the use of insectary intercrops like alyssum enhance the ability of beneficial insects to control economically important pests like aphids. We call this pest management strategy conservation biological control. Let's now move to the USDA Organic Research Farm, where I'll share how my approach to intercropping alyssum and lettuce has become much more efficient over the past 10 years. This 23-acre site includes an ongoing long-term organic systems experiment, where we've grown two acres of romaine lettuce, broccoli, and strawberries on a commercial scale in rotation with various cover crops over the past 10 years. Today I'm going to focus on the intercropping practices that we use to maximize the potential marketable yields during nine years of lettuce production. This research is partially funded by the wholesale of marketable vegetables from the experiment. Therefore, to continue the research, I was highly motivated to maximize the marketable yields and the efficiency of the lettuce production. Here are a few details about the lettuce management. A GPS guided tractor was used to form beds that were 40 inches wide and into which we injected pre-plant organic fertilizers. After shaping the beds, the lettuce was transplanted in two lines 12 inches apart with 11 to 12 inches between plants within each line. The transplants were approximately 30 to 35 days old at transplanting. And transplanting usually occurred during the first 10 days of May except for during year three when the rains delayed it until late May. Sprinkle irrigation was used to establish the transplants, but drip irrigation was used for most of the season. Liquid organic fertilizers were injected through the drip tape approximately 30 days after transplanting, and the weeds were controlled by tractor cultivation and by hand weeding once during each lettuce crop. The lettuce was harvested at maturity about 39 to 49 days after transplanting. The alyssum insectary beds were concentrated on eight of the 48 total beds in the field. Notice that alyssum beds one and eight on the edges of the field were single alyssum beds, followed by 10 beds of lettuce, then two beds of alyssum, and 10 more beds of lettuce, etc. This picture shows four different alyssum varieties, including the sweet variety 
that's the typical insectary variety that's used in California. The alyssum and lettuce in the background were all transplanted 46 days ago, and it's really clear that the sweet alyssum variety is much more vigorous and bushy than the three ornamental alyssum varieties that are shown. I'll now highlight three major changes in how lettuce was intercropped with alyssum during the nine years, and then I'll explain my rationale for making each change. So the first change occurred after year two, and basically it involved switching from using alyssum seed to using transplants to establish the insectary beds. Alyssum seed is extremely small, and the seed of the sweet variety is also pretty inexpensive. Now, during the first two years, I thought that direct seeding alyssum would be far more cost-effective than using alyssum transplants. I was really wrong, though, because direct seeding alyssum in dense lines in the field had two major problems. I'll use a few drawings to illustrate the first problem that involved weed management. So this drawing shows a single bed with two transplant lines of lettuce approximately two and a half to three weeks after transplanting. The field is ready to hand weed at this stage and the red dots represent emerged weeds. Note that the weeds had already been removed from the bed center and the furrow by tractor cultivation. Now hand weeding in a situation like this is relatively easy because the weeds are small and easy to distinguish from the larger and evenly spaced lettuce transplants. This drawing shows weeds interspersed with two lines of direct seeded alyssum plants. The green dots here represent densely seeded alyssum plants and the red dots represent weeds. Now note that the density and the location of the weeds here is the same as in the previous drawing where lettuce transplants were shown. However, in this case, the weeds and the alyssum emerge together. And if I hadn't colored the weeds red, they'd be very difficult to distinguish from the alyssum. As you can imagine, this was extremely difficult to hand weed. And the situation only got worse as the weeds and the alyssum plants got bigger and tangled together. Furthermore, many of the weeds in these direct seeded alyssum lines escaped control and went on to produce seed that added to the weed seed bank. The second major problem with direct seeding alyssum in transplanted lettuce is that even in the summer, alyssum seedlings often need to grow for about a month before they can begin flowering. In fact, this alyssum seedling didn't flower until it was 36 days old. Now in contrast, alyssum transplants are usually flowering at transplanting. Early flowering of the insectary plants is really important for transplanted crops like lettuce that may be harvested at 39 to 49 days after transplanting. The fact that lettuce during the first two years of production was not infested with aphids does suggest that flowering from direct seeded alyssum was adequate for biological control of aphids. However, the cost of alyssum transplants seemed worthwhile for both weed control reasons and the likely benefits of earlier flowering for biological control of aphids. So after four years of successful lettuce production without any major aphid problems, I wondered if I could reduce the amount of space that was allocated to alyssum and still control aphids. The eight beds that were devoted to alyssum during the first four years were obviously effective but they were also reducing the area for lettuce by 17%. This displacement of lettuce for insectary plants like alyssum is a major concern for farmers in Salinas because the land rent is quite high here. The last two intercropping changes that I'll discuss are two approaches that I used to reduce the field area that was displaced by insectary plantings. So this photo shows the intercropping pattern during years five to seven. Notice that rather than eight solid beds of alyssum that were used during the first four years, the insectary beds now included one line of alyssum and one line of lettuce. This still provided excellent aphid control and it boosted lettuce yields by 8% because there were 8% more lettuce plants in the field. Let's now move on to the last intercropping change that was really the most radical. This last change was inspired by a competition experiment between alyssum and lettuce that I conducted during years five and six. As you can see, I tried all kinds of crazy combinations of these two plants. All the details from that competition experiment are described in this recent publication. 
but I'll just describe the most exciting results from the experiment with a simple addition equation. So if we add the transplants from one bed of lettuce to the transplants from one bed of alyssum, we get an intercropping pattern that has twice the normal transplant density. We call this additive intercropping because we added the two densities together. Now there's obviously more competition in the additive pattern because it's more crowded. The amazing thing about this additive pattern is that the increased competition only reduced lettuce biomass or lettuce size by about 25% and alyssum biomass by about half compared with when they were growing separately on beds of their own. I'll now show you how I use the information from this experiment to improve the efficiency of intercropping lettuce and alyssum during years eight and nine. So here's what the field looked like 20 days after transplanting during year eight. Now you might be wondering what's happened? Where's the alyssum? That question, where's the alyssum? reminds me of a well-known and beautiful song by Pete Seeger. Sing along if you like as I play a line or two of that song on my guitar. Where have all the flowers gone? Long time passing. Where have all the flowers gone? That's a great song, but let me answer the question, where are the alyssum flowers? Now here's the field 44 days after transplanting and about a week before harvest during year eight. There's lots of alyssum flowers out there, but they're just not as obvious as in the previous years where alyssum displaced lettuce. Here's another shot the next day when the lighting made it easier to see the alyssum. I wanna point out two things in this picture. First, I want you to notice that most of the alyssum is still concentrated on a few beds. These are the same eight insectary beds that were used during the previous years. This close-up shot shows the additive pattern that we used in the insectary beds during year eight. Notice that there's only one alyssum transplant every three lettuce transplants in one line of the bed. A similar pattern was used during year nine except that there was only one alyssum transplant between every five lettuce transplants in one line of each bed. This figure with white symbols to represent alyssum illustrates the difference in the extremely intense additive intercropping pattern that was used in that competition experiment that I described earlier compared with the additive patterns that were used during years eight and nine on the insectary beds. The intercropping patterns used during these last two years were designed to reduce the potential for competition between alyssum and lettuce. In fact, in a subsequent study, I found that there was no difference in the marketable weight of a box of lettuce from beds with the additive pattern that we used during year eight compared to the weight of a box of lettuce from beds without any alyssum. Now this is a very, very important point because what it means is that with these less intense additive intercropping patterns, we can produce alyssum flowers for the beneficial insects without losing any lettuce yields. It's really a win-win situation. The second thing that I wanna highlight about the additive intercropping patterns that we use during years eight and nine are these lines of alyssum that ran perpendicular to the bed direction. If you looked at the field from the top, it would be a grid like this, with the insectary and lettuce beds running from the bottom to the top of the figure, and the perpendicular lines running from the left to the right. So why did we add these perpendicular lines to create this grid pattern? Well, basically this was done because I was concerned that the relatively low intensity additive pattern on the eight insectary beds alone might not provide quite enough alyssum flowers to encourage hoverfly movement through the whole field. But you know, I really don't know if this concern was justified. You might be wondering how we created this additive intercropping pattern through the field. First, we transplanted lettuce across all 48 beds using a tractor-drawn transplanter. And then in one line on the eight insectary beds, by hand, we inserted one alyssum transplant between every three or five lettuce plants during years eight and nine, respectively. 
For each of the nine perpendicular lines, we walked across all the beds and inserted one lissom transplant by hand between two lettuce transplants in one line for each of the beds. Our lettuce yields were highest these last two years when we used the additive intercropping approach because alyssum didn't displace any lettuce. I'll summarize my experience with intercropping lettuce with alyssum over the nine years with two figures. So this first figure shows the dramatic change in the amount of lettuce that was displaced by alyssum over the years. Based on my experience, I highly recommend the additive intercropping approach for transplanted lettuce because it's much more land efficient, it didn't reduce marketable head weight of lettuce, and yet it still provided beneficial insects like hoverflies with the food that they needed to survive and control aphids. This last figure illustrates how the density of alyssum transplants changed over time. It's interesting to note that we got excellent aphid control all years despite the drastic reduction in the number of alyssum transplants per acre. This experience leads me to conclude that during the first seven years, we were providing far more alyssum flowers for the hoverflies than was really necessary. I estimate that additive intercropping with about 500 to 1,000 alyssum transplants per acre distributed throughout the field should provide sufficient pollen and nectar for the hoverflies to control aphids in transplanted romaine lettuce. I hope this video has helped you to understand the value and the complexity of intercropping lettuce with insectary plants like alyssum for biological control of aphids. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more exciting sustainable ag research. And when you eat your next organic lettuce, think of all the flowers and hardworking people and hoverflies that it took to produce it.